I came to this country during the Clinton administration, pre his um, seminal Jackson Pollock era. When I had my beautiful children, I prayed that this country would grant them the opportunities that I never had. I would have never anticipated what would happen to them. It was um, a normal afternoon. I was watching some funny videos on YouTubes and cutting up some fruit for my son. My beautiful ethnic prince, because I had not fed him in over 20 minutes, that's when I heard it. It was music coming from upstairs, which is odd because usually when he listens to his degenerate tunes, he does it on his earphones that have cat ears on them for some reason, I don't know. He assures me it's very heterosexual, so I went upstairs to investigate. Mare, can you please- <gasps> What I saw, I will never forget. Mm, yeah, 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 uh, yeah. He was recording what I now know is a thirst trap. I was so shocked that I began to convulse. Yeah, yeah. He wasn't even good. The music he was dancing to was terrible. It was by a rapper called Little Late Child Support or something. I was stunned into silence. All I could do was watch as the fruit of my womb danced like a thought for an audience of thirsty bipolar girls and perverts. Everything that I sacrificed for my children so that they could have the American dream. I used to be concerned that maybe he would go down the wrong path, like getting arrested for a violent crime or becoming a hardcore fan of Weezer, but never in my worst nightmare did I think he would do something like this. Something that was so undignified, he didn't even notice that I was on the floor. He just kept gyrating. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I cannot do this anymore. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, would you guys like something to eat? That's right, I'm keeping the wig on. You know, as much as we clown immigrant parents for their quirks, a lot of us are not admitting the actions that we took that scarred them. My sweet mother spent hours in labor, only for me 25 years later to do this. I stand by that video because I think it's funny, but still. Uh, for any of y'all watching this, and just to, you know, up my engagement, what is a stereotype about immigrants that's not even a stereotype? It's an accurate observation. I'll go first. Colored people time. I have never been to an Abisha event where people showed up on time. Any arrival time that you see on an invitation is a mere suggestion, like traffic lights, or federal laws. Why don't we just do a speed round? Every meme slash stereotype about immigrant parents. And go. Mama, da da. I am a boy, but I want to get my ears pierced. You are gay. I know that I am a boy, but I want to grow my hair long. You are gay. I want to be a rapper. I would, I would like to be a, a terrorist. Mommy, I am depression. Uh, why don't you drink some water and pray? Okay, mommy, I'm going out in this outfit. Uh, keep your you voice. Can I please go trick or treat this Halloween? My God is now Reese's Pieces. Your attempts to raise me in the ways of the Lord have failed. Me, What is it, Grandma? Oh my gosh! Grandma, you can't say that! He popping around with their sucking pants and snow bunnies! Jenny Curl! Excuse me. I feel parched. Mommy? Daddy? This is my black American boyfriend. Hi, nice to meet you. Mommy, daddy, this is my black American boyfriend. I'm gonna ruin this <coughs> credit. I'm going to be an artist. I'm going to be homeless. And then I'm going to become a direct. <coughs> I will bring shame to the family. And worst of all, my art won't even be that good. Um, uh, I got an 89 on my math test. Wow, 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 wow. Your ass is grass and I'm going to mow it. Okay, now that we've got those out of the way. Also, I am aware that my accents are not very good, okay? I can't even do an Ethiopian one. I can barely do a Nigerian one. For some reason, whenever I try to do an Ethiopian one, I just end up sounding vaguely Slavic. Uh, yes, uh, uh McDonald? I feel as if a lot of the content around being an immigrant or growing up with immigrant parents has shifted somewhat. From people back in 2014 literally wrapping any kind of fabric around their head to pretend to be their mother. And now it's about, you know, unpacking intergenerational trauma, but also still putting stuff on your head to pretend to be your mom. Bringing you sliced fruit after she beat your little brown cheeks 20 minutes prior. Truly representing the duality of woman. Now, I love my family and I got it easier than a lot of y'all, <laughs> clearly. But the old 
older I get, the more I look back at certain aspects of stereotypical immigrant parenting and think, nah, they had a point. So I'm going to defend some of these rules slash life lessons. Starting with the classic, don't follow your dreams. Look, as someone who did technically follow my dreams and was lucky enough for it to kind of have worked out, not in full at least, not yet, I'm optimistic. I am of the opinion that one should not follow their dreams, but their skill set. And if you are fortunate, they might overlap. On occasion, I will see people going, my family does not believe in my art, but I will show them. Hold on now, because you're leaving out the crucial detail that this is the art you're referring to. Hey mom, uh, I want to play you some of my music. Okay, my prince. Gratata! Yeah! They call me the quill, because I make <laughs> go night, night. night. Rock. I stay strapped, because all the <laughs> in my hood rep black, black and, and white. white. Dominoes! Ah. It, it wasn't finished. Shh, you are not good. But mommy, <laughs> Oh, my friend said, your friends are liars. They're preying on your downfall. Oh, so what do you mean the, the, the uh, Negroes in your hood rep black and white? You mean the Orthodox Jews that live on this street? Mommy, it's about like, cultivating a specific image. I'm saying this because I love you, all right? Give up, okay? Are you hungry? No, I, I just ate. Okay, I'll make you something. Unfortunately, even for those who are genuinely talented, we do not live in a meritocracy. Our parents were raised mostly in survival mode, but many of us suckled on the teat of America, growing fat on the fruits of their labor. I really am a poet. I don't even think that analogy made any sense. So what many of us viewed as our parents trying to crush our dreams was really just them trying to protect us from the harsh reality of how most pipe dreams end and encouraging us to find fulfillment in something like family, faith, personal relationships. When I was 12, I wanted to be an actor and my parents said, no, girl, you can't even act. Okay, they didn't say that last part, but they did crush those little thespian dreams of mine. And you know what? They were right. Hollywood would have chewed my little black butt up and spit me out. Best case scenario, after years of rejection and developing a problem, I would have been cast as the too old looking buck toothed best friend in a Disney Channel show that 15 years later on a podcast reveals that I was running through that cast like Hussein Bolt. That's best case scenario. Next rule, no sleepovers, no parties, no staying out late. As someone whose friends were uh, dorks, the no staying out late and partying rule really did not affect me. Like these were the friends in question. <laughs> Let me just say that even as a teen, having seen some of the Snapchat stories recorded during the get-togethers of some of my classmates, oh boy, it was like Caligula if everyone wore a snapback. Even then I knew that nothing good would have really come from me attending that. I always thought that the whole appeal of staying out late as a teen was to loiter with your friends in a park and you're sitting on the swings and they confess that they're the reason their uncle died. That was the loss of innocence that I understood. Not getting diddled at a mid-party by a guy who idolized Dane Cook. Regarding no sleepovers, this was the only rule that really frustrated me because in my little ratty braided head, I had this fantasy of what an American sleepover consisted of. My friends and I would be like giggling into our hands and divulging secrets and having pillow fights, which is kind of crazy looking back at it because at that age, I had one close friend. All we would have done is like watch a single Disney Channel original movie, drinking a Capri Sun and then go to sleep at 7.30. From my perspective, this is how the conversation went with my mother. Mommy, uh, can I go to a sleepover? No. But, uh, no. She never let me do anything. I'm gonna run away. She thinks I won't do it, but I will. <laughs> now, this was my mother's perspective. Authorities arrested David Child Diddler Jr. last night after discovering he had trapped two young girls in his basement where he tied them up and forced them to listen to secular music and watch filthy shows like Family Guy. Upon hearing the news, one of the friends of the two girls stated, Thank God my immigrant mother didn't let me sleep over at my friend's house. That's right. Mommy, can I, the light of your life and most precious thing to you, go stay the night at the house of a complete stranger whose parents you barely know and have not vetted to do God knows what? Only a few years after 9-11, which has nothing to do with kids, but it still just is in your mind and kind of scares you. In this bat <coughs> crazy country where you barely know anyone and whose culture you do not like or trust, please? I can see now why she said no. Now, because of the fact that I wasn't allowed to hang out at all but one of my friend's houses growing up, as a 20-something 
year old, having pizza parties and playing board games with my grown friends is actually novel. By this time, most of my peers have moved on to having existential crises and pregnancy scares. But me and my other sheltered African kids are having a blast drinking soda and staying out past 10 p.m. Now, regarding points of contention with the classic immigrant parenting style, let's begin with the classic. Corporal punishment. Now, I have never raised a child, and I understand that most parents who are employing this disciplining tactic were not trying to abuse their children. But it is exhausting that there are some individuals who seem to think that the only two options for disciplining children is to either one, put a broom to their little tuchuses for the slightest infraction, or two, being a doormat that just allows them to walk all over you. On one end of the spectrum, you have the classic stereotypical white mom in the grocery store. Timmy, please stop exposing yourself, okay? This is a Whole Foods. We talked about this. Maybe if we were in a giant, this would be acceptable. I'm taking away your McLaren if you don't stop. In my head, Timmy is 17. And then on the other hand, you have parents who are doing like mortal combat combo moves on their kids. And then you have the people who comment, I don't know why parents these days don't beat their kids. <laughs> my parents did and I turned out fine. Huh? You are one of the most emotionally unstable people I've ever met. Clearly, it didn't work. It knocked a screw loose. Now, was I hit? <laughs> Yeah. I got like, you know, the belt, the classic flip-flop boomerang. The intentions behind it were not malicious. Admittedly, I was being a little nuisance. I would not describe it as being traumatizing, like by any stretch of the imagination. I'm just saying this because I know some of y'all are gonna be like, <laughs> uh, you clearly weren't hit. I was on occasion and you know, it didn't work. Besides corporal punishment literally being ineffective, it just opens the door for more sadistic parents to use this as an excuse to straight up abuse their kids. Some of the stories I've heard, whew. Maybe some of your kids don't speak to you because you put them in CIA black site stress positions for the slightest transgression and you never learned how to effectively communicate with them. It's almost like you can appreciate the sacrifices that your family made so that you could live a much more privileged life than they did while also admitting like any humans that they had faults and not trying to repeat those same mistakes with your offspring. You can do both. Now, on to BS beauty standards. As someone who has a face like an almond and hair like dirty spaghetti under this wig. When it comes to the beauty standard prevalent in Ethiopian communities and also African communities. You know what? Throw in every majority non-white country. I got off easy because the standard was lighter skin and more loosely coiled hair. I was never subjected to the same level of disrespectful and rude comments that other Abisha girls who were darker or had like more tightly coiled hair had to deal with. I even remember those fair and lovely commercials that used to come on satellite TV back when I lived in Ethiopia. I used to be brown and ugly and people spit in my face. But then I peeled a layer of my skin off and I finally have worth and a boyfriend somehow. <laughs> Fair and lovely. Hate yourself. Thankfully, my family members, especially the women, never made any disparaging comments about other kids or people's skin tone growing up because they realized it was cool and, you know, unchristian and they didn't want to encourage that sort of behavior. But when it came to hair, <sighs> Oh boy. Any African girls will know exactly what I'm talking about. The code pretty much was straight hair equals sophisticated and classy. Natural hair can be cute for non-formal occasions as long as it's 3C or even more loosely coiled. If you're gonna be getting your photo taken though, straighten your hair. Weddings, parties, any event where you have to look proper, straighten your hair. Natural hair, if it is considered an acceptable curl pattern, can pass through depending on the occasion. The attitudes around this topic are changing, thankfully. The newer generation is a bit more accepting of natural hair and even more traditional African hairstyles. I think that is the beautiful thing about being part of the younger generation. We can make sure to preserve the traditions of old and keep the focus on family and community while also shedding the more toxic intergenerational customs. You bet your little tuckus, I'm gonna be teaching my kids how to make doro what? And if they decide that they wanna wear, you know, ripped skinny jeans, <laughs> I will find a way to accept it. And that's progress. This video actually might be the most lore that I've dropped about myself and it will stay that way. So tell me down below, if you are an immigrant or you were raised by immigrants, what was your favorite part about that experience? What was your least favorite? Do you agree with me? Disagree? Just want to compliment me? Please do in the comment section down below. Like, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you know every time that I upload. That's my favorite part about this job, begging for engagement. Thank you for watching. Shout out to my top patrons. If you would like to contribute to my Patreon where I upload upload new videos every single week, then click the link in the description or on screen. Thank you to my other lovely patrons. Your names should be scrolling on screen as I speak. Bye.